Hey guys, Mike, Motivate Fabrication. Uh, I wanted to go over uh, a mach one of my favorite machines in the shop just because of how handy it is. And uh, one machine that I really didn't realize how much I would use until I uh, got my hands on one. And uh, this is a, a Grove 18 inch bandsaw. I think it's um, an NS18. It is an older version. It doesn't have a, kind of the gear selector to change speeds. It actually uses uh, belts to change speeds. However, you really don't do a lot of speed changes. And I'm gonna see if I can get you down in here to show you the belt system on this machine. It's a little tucked away and this thing is too heavy to move. But there's a series of belts in there. I know it's hard to see. And you change them for the speed of the blade and it shows you, you know, high and low. And then that refers to a chart up here of a speed chart based on what RPM you want to run and what material. Um, so for example, if you wanted to cut, uh, Let's see. You wanted to cut cast iron. You would be on speed number one, which would be 50 RPM. Um, it also gives you a radius chart for this width of blade. So I'm running a 5 16 blade, which can do this radius of a cut. So you can see here blade size but uh i guess the downfall of this machine um it's really how how big they are if you're in a two-car garage it's going to take up a significant amount of room just for comparison here's a 14 inch delta rockwell wood cutting bandsaw and it it seems like it's a toy compared to this how big this machine is but it really has to be this big and heavy because when you're um, cutting sheet, you, you push on it pretty hard and then you got big pieces of sheet that might weigh 60, 70 pounds or more. And um, if you had something that size, it would tip the saw, if the saw might push and move. But um, yeah, they're, they're built this size for a reason. But I'll give you kind of a look inside of it. This is the idler arm, and then here's where you can uh, set your tension. There's a big, there's a spring in there that actually uh, pushes, I know I'm too close, but pushes this wheel upward at a preset amount of spring pressure. And there's actually a, a gauge in here about how far in or out you need. And while we're in here, the other thing, I'm gonna put you back on the stand so I can use two hands. All right, so the other thing is this um, adjustment for the height. You, know, you wanna be as low as possible, but still have enough clearance so you don't by keeping it low, you uh, reduce the deflection of the blade. And you can then change that by pulling this lever and you slide this up and down. And it works by, there's a chain that goes around the pulley and there's a weight in here that helps you go up and down. And I, I keep it, you know, usually at three quarters of an inch or less at the bottom. And uh, I'll show you the bottom wheel in here. And the bottom wheel is the drive wheel. It has a brush to keep the tire clean and a little chip tray down there. It catches uh, the shavings. On my particular machine, this, this is a pedal that, uh, from what I understand, 
it's a feed mechanism. There's a it's supposed to be a weight inside the cabinet and a, a chain and hook mechanism that hooks on your material and it it's, uses the weight in the machine to help you push it through the blade. Um, this one's missing those parts and being I'm not using it in a production environment, it, it's not something I really miss. Um, it also has a blade welder. I do, I've never used it. So I assume it works, but I really don't know. And you would use that if you needed to um, cut out like the inside of this without cutting through the side. So you drill a hole, cut your blade in half, feed your blade through it, weld your blade back together, then cut your piece out. And um, you do that all over again to put your blade back together. I usually try to find other means to cut the inside of something out, either weld it back together after I go through the side. Um, so, cause I'm a little nervous to try out uh, cutting this fairly expensive blade. They're not really, really bad. I think it was somewhere around the $60 price range uh, for the blade and it, it lasts a long time. I've hardly had this one in here. Uh, probably about a year, but like I said, I don't use it, you know, every day, but I've, I've used it quite a bit. Um, this is three phase and the way I run this machine and, and my lathe and the mill, I uh, have this rotary phase converter that I built. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to start the phase converter up. I'm going to start the bandsaw up and I'm going to cut this out. Uh, this is our project that I have going on and uh, I'll probably uh, fast forward after a minute or so of cutting. That's the way it doesn't take so long. You can kind of see roughly about how fast you can cut something like this out versus like a, a cutoff wheel and uh, or a plasma cutter. So I'm going to get started here. I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be in front of the machine to push it, but I want to get a, you know, a good view of, of the cut here. All right, here we go. <laughs> Got the rotary face converter on. Now I'm gonna start the saw up. Adjust my pipe. So it took me a few minutes to cut this uh, Y or V 
shape out of a piece of, uh, that's 10 gauge. There it is. So, pretty quick, really. Um, like I said, that's a 5 16 by, I think, a 16 tooth per inch. It might be an 18 tooth per inch. But, um, you know, if you uh, have the chance of picking up a Grobe or a Do-All is a much more common name, uh, it's uh, definitely worth it. And really the uh, three-phase part of it. If you're somewhat um, electronic, electrical, uh, you know, some knowledge there, you can build one for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, so it's not too bad. Um, that's kind of it on the bandsaw. Just wanted to give you a, a better overview of that machine. I don't think I've really ever featured it in video. And for some of you that are watching my channel for the Hendy Lay, they'll just give you a brief update. I got the headstock back on the other day. Um, the main spindle I put back in. And uh, right now I am waiting for some thread repair inserts because I have some strip threads. And then once I get those fixed, I'm going to uh, clean it one last time and paint it to match the base. And then we'll move on to the next part of it. So anyway, that's it for uh, video this week. Um, sorry, it was a little shorter and less in depth than normal, but uh, hopefully you found uh, this interesting and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Please subscribe.